Shalom, everybody. I'm here with a legend, Carlos Butch Small, legendary R&B, legendary soul, and legendary hip-hop percussionist. Uh, uh, Carl, uh, uh, Brother Butch, would you just say a word to the people? Uh, you have so much history behind your belt. You play with Parliament Funkadelic. You're responsible for the most famous snare in hip-hop music. Uh, well, just, just, just talk to the people a little bit about being a legend. What, what, what is it? What, what is it like? Well, you know, it's like I don't consider myself a legend, but you know, that's that's what is defined in the dictionary. You know, after you've done so much and spanned so long, and and you know, um, been a a mentor or. Uh, someone that's mastered your craft, and, you know, I'm considered a master percussionist now. But I, uh, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. Is his home. And right now, it might be a little loud here because I'm, I'm doing a video shoot for L.J. Reynolds right now on a song, uh, "You Love the Ball." It's on his CD, which I always performed on. Um, I can tell you. And my career spans 40, 43 years professionally from high school, from Cooley High School. I'm a, I'm a Cooley uh, Detroit High School graduate, which I didn't get the chance to graduate from high school because I got snatched out of high school. I did my first gold record with a uh, group, uh, uh, Undisputed Truth, named Smiling Faces. Mm. And from that point on, you played on smaller faces. Yes. And from that point on, I uh, was doing recording work for all kind of major artists out of Detroit, from Dramatics to Enchantment to Parliament Funkadelic, uh, Al Hudson in One Way, uh, RJ's Latest Survival, Michael Henderson, uh, Sweet Cream. Uh, you know, uh, David Ruffin, uh, The Dells, uh, Albert King, uh, Shirley Caesar, The Clark Sisters, you know. Uh, That's my piece. Yeah, I, I did The Clark Sisters, You Brought the Sunshine. Really? Yeah, I did that. I worked with Thomas Whiffle. I did Vanessa Bell Armstrong, her album The Chosen. I've also engineered on, uh, did mixing on those albums. Uh, I've got a long career in music, and then as, you know, uh, the 90s came in, I, uh, I wound up going to the West Coast, which had already been going forever. Um, I got a call from Dr. Dre, and he had read my name on so many records, so many credits, he said he wanted me to come and work for Death Row, and I took him up on the offer, and I went out and I did Dr. Dre, and I did Snoop Doggy Dogs first album, The Dog Found, uh, Rage, um, Tupac, uh, Ice Cube, and I also did pop albums like Mariah Carey, Maya, Brandy, uh, so many artists I work with, and I still today work with artists. I travel live right now with the Four Tops around the world. I'm getting ready to work on Usher and Justin Bieber's new album. Um, so, you know, my my career just keeps going. I've done about 200 albums and still doing them. I think I got one of the biggest discographies in Michigan. Um, and I think I, you know, the creator blessed me with a talent and didn't want me to be exclusive anywhere. I've been non-exclusive with all these artists so that I can, you know, spread my talents around the world and I'll, on the planet, that's that's what I do. So, um, I ran into Jack here, you know, down at uh, the video shoot, as I was saying, for L.J. Reynolds. I'm in his newest video that will be released in a month or so. Um, and he knows my oldest son, Carlos, uh, which is known as DJ Lo. Uh, oh, yeah, he's a legend. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, I can remember when he, um, I used to take him around, around the country to New York with me and, 
different places. Uh, he had his little jacket on with his back uh, back uh, stage stickers when I was with Parliament Funkadelic. I had him in uh, Bootsy's Rubber Band in the Bun Patrol when I was in Bootsy's Rubber Band. Wow. Uh, and he surprised me one day. I seen him nothing with a turntable and, <laughs> and I said, you interested in that? And he said, yeah, Dad. So I said, come on, go with me. And I took him to Wonderland Music in Dearborn and I know Clarence and Larry who owned the uh, store. And I bought him his first 1200 turntable and his mixer and all of that, and, you know, and his, his amp so he can hear everything. So from that point on, uh, I wound up producing an album on him when he was 15, uh, Easy B DJ Los Untouchable album. Legendary album. Yeah, it, it, it was like a start of a, a hip hop movement here in Detroit, right. you know, and and I distributed it on my own label, uh, World One Records, with two other partners, John Maxey and Gene David, and we did the promotion tour and had billboards on the side of Tower Records on Sunset in Hollywood, you know, so their album was a national uh, album. And uh, so I've seen Lowe grow from that point into a producer. He also produced the song uh, Get My Money Right on the Above the Rim album that was released by Death Row, and I was an exec there at Death Row as well. And uh, so I've seen him develop, and he's, I have to say my son is my favorite DJ in all the world, because his rhythm, you know, is so, uh, my, my whole career has been based on rhythm, and so I know rhythm when I hear it, and, you know, he's so precise. I, used, I know he used to tell me sometimes, I used to be on the one like, that's not quite right. Let's do that again. Let's do that again. And I know I probably used to get on his nerve like a father would, you know, but I was hearing something that I knew that he could really zero in on it. And finally, he started producing track. And he's a master like DJ. Whenever I do anything that I'm leaning DJ on, you know, it's got to be low. I know a lot of great DJs, Battle Cat, uh, you know, I've worked with, you know, just many of them in the hip-hop era, but when it comes to me listening to what they do, uh, uh, Eric B, I know them all, so Los knows how to cut just like I hear it, and whatever I produce, whenever I do any project and I want any kind of DJ, and I did a a group called U.S. America, and I had him on there. He was only about 13 years old. He was on the record beatboxing with me. He did the scene with me. I produced and wrote the theme song for the scene of, you know, the local dance show here in Detroit. And, and he appeared on there with us. And so he has a whole... Theme? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. So we have a whole legacy of music. And it's been going on like that for... For me, 43 years, and for low since he was 15, and I don't know if I should tell his age. Mr. Reynolds. I don't mean the whole ass. You're doing good. I'm, I'm <laughs> glad to know that. That's, that's, my, that's my man right there. But, uh, yeah, low has been doing this professionally since he was 15 years old. And, uh, well, Jack knows how old he is. I'm not going to tell the listeners. He may say, Dad, why do you, why do you say that? You know? <laughs> That's so, so, yeah, so I'm just going to say he's been doing this professionally since he was 15. He produced uh, tracks for Snoop, you know, um, and uh, for Snoop's internet radio show. Los did the theme song for that, you know, so I'm really proud of him. And he works with a lot of local underground artists, you know, and he's, you know, he, he's doing his thing. So uh, I, think, I think it's incredibly ironic or, or a real mark that the creator is in your genes. Yeah. That you would be a legend. Yeah. And then your son yeah. also would be a legend. Yeah. From yeah. Detroit. From yeah. Detroit. Oh, yeah. The very first 
Detroit rap album I saw and bought right. was Easy B and DJ Lowe's. Uh, there you go. Yeah. We uh when I did that I had a my two other partners and myself, we just said, you know what? We need to do something with the youth. And you know, we knew we had a winning combination. Uh, we knew we were going to break ground with their album, you know, which today they're known as Pioneers. That's right. Uh, uh, Maceo Parker is on the album, who, who's a saxophone player with James Brown, which was in the group with me with Sweatband and Parliament Funkadelic. Uh, myself, I produced, you know, all the tracks, music. I did multiple instruments on there and did the mixing and mastering. Uh, we came, my partner Gene came up with the clothes concept. Uh, Mr. Maxi, who is like at the head of the management company, you know, that managed and guided his careers through, you know. So, you know, we just had a plan and wanted to execute it. And the album, they, it did very well uh, to be locally but it wound up being national because we had distributorships, independent distributorships throughout the United States. So now, can can, can I ask you a, a, a question kind of on the spot? How, how do you feel about the fact that that era of Detroit rap, that you helped to pioneer yeah. because of your label, which yeah. also was the label that Cash and Maestro was in? Exactly. How do you feel that that era of Detroit rap has kind of been pushed to the side in lieu of the Eminem and the Joe Boy Cash out? Well, I don't, I don't have, uh, I think, any cre creativity, especially Emma. Emma is one of my favorite rappers. Uh, and, you know, as time goes on and things develop, you know, I've seen music, period. Not only the hip-hop, but the R&B, uh, gospel. I've seen it all evolve, you know, so... Timing is what takes place with with music. You know, when we did the Easy B DJ Los album, we kind of like wanted to bring the first product that we did. We didn't want it to be so much hardcore, uh, so we didn't have to put a Perry and an advisory sticker on the Los Easy B DJ Los album. But at that time, was when NWA was breaking ground with the gangster rap and and two live crew where, and everybody was going explicit and things like that. We really didn't want to go that route because we knew, well, primary from me coming from a music uh, background, I knew that radio play was going to be important for anything that you do. So we didn't come with the explicit thing so we could get get the radio play that we wanted. Stuff like that. That's the famous young man right there. Quentin Denard Jr. His dad plays drums. He plays drums. He engineered this album for LJ. And played drums on this album too. Yeah, yeah. And wrote two or three songs on the album. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, uh, like I said, we didn't want to go the route of the explicit because we come from a background of radio. I come from radio. More advertisement, more sales, more uh, widespread exposure. And that's the reason why I love this album. They, you know, at times they wanted to do something different, but they, they listened to us. So, you know, that's how we, we did it, you know. And, uh, but like I said, the music evolves. It evolves now. You know, yeah. I'm not too fond of come on, come on say. the new, newness of the new music, but I, I'm a part of it anyway. You know, I still do albums. I still, I'm still hired to work on these albums. You know, I understand them because it's creativity, you know, and that's what I've been all about. I always create new sounds and percussion, whether I'm recording things backwards or coming up with new techniques or solo parts or things like that. So I'm, I'm part of, of that music. Yeah. Well, well, now one, one last thing uh, uh, before we 
get back to this video shoot. What about the Parliament clap? That that story has been told to me by Los. But DJ Los, this man's son, the legendary DJ Los, is a good friend of mine. He's been telling me for years about his dad's accomplishments. I've read on the back of many an album cover, yeah. sampling and producing myself. Um, I've yeah. seen the man's name a million times. But Los told me that he created the clap. The yeah. very famous clap, it, it, yeah. it has to be the most sample snare in hip-hop. Yeah. Can you just tell us just a little bit about that? Well, how it came about was we used to do hand claps, and it would be four or five of us gathering around, whether it be female or male, and we'd be clapping in two or four. But some people's claps would be a little off, or the girls may have on bracelets making noise. So I said, you know what? Come up with something, you know? So I thought this in my head that it would be a good thing for me to do something like that and add it to my arsenal, what I already do. So I went to the hardware store and bought uh, some wood with the mic of backing because I know if you do a lot of pressure on wood, it will split. So I uh, bought wood with the mic of backing. So it was compressed wood, already compressed. Mic of backing. I bought some handles, uh, some screws, some hinges. I bought all this stuff at a place called Four City. If anybody ever remember that from a long time ago. But anyway, I sat at home in my basement and put this all together. And then uh, I took it to the studio one night. I was working with, you know, with Parliament and Bootsy and everybody, you know. Was it not the Supper Source people? Was, 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 was it not the Supper Source people? No, I, actually that was a little bit before the time that I got with Parliament. Uh, I got with them when they started really taking off with hit records like One Nation and Knee Deep, Flashlight, Knock with Boogie, gotcha. and things of that nature. And that's where you'll hear a lot of these claps and stuff. So Bootsy, um, I was really part of Bootsy's rubber band, although I did Parliament Funkadelic album and formed on there with them. Uh, but I was basically based in Bootsy's rubber band, and Bootsy gave me a Mutron 3, which he had so many gadgets with his base, and he had another Mutron 3, so he gave it to me. So I took it, and then in the studio, no, nah, I let it hang just like that. That's good. You can hang it. Let it hang like that. Let it hang like that. Yeah, yeah, you want to do something different, something young. There you go. But I, uh, that was L.J. Reynolds, by the way. He was a good friend of mine. And right here sitting next to me, this is Mr. Roby Nichols, the wardrobe manager for the Four Tops. We work together right now around the world. Wow. And uh, so there's so many legendary people here. But um, he gave me the Neutron 3. I went to the studio late night, and I was working with Jim City, legendary engineer. And so we started just looking up other gadgets. And he, he said, let's put this on. He put the harmonizer, uh, the 910 uh, even tied harmonizer on there, the, the plural to clap a little. And I use, I know microphones because. Um, well, I've owned a studio, for one thing, and I know the frequencies that microphones handle. So I used the Neumann U87 microphone, and I would sit on the floor in a 20-foot ceiling uh, studio at United Sound, Studio A. You sit about three, maybe three feet to four feet from the, from the glass to get the reflection from the glass. And it was all arm power. And uh, so I would have to sit down there and clap on two and four with these boards for five minutes, six minutes, eight minutes, you know, wow. in time, you know. And 
when Jim would be recording me, he would add my Mutron 3 for the sweep. We'd use the harmonizer on there for the pluralness and pitch on. And, and the board that we were using at that time was called a Flickinger board. And, they, and we'd use the EQ from that. So once I would put down the part, I'd go into the control room, EQ the clap, put the, the, uh, the outboard gear that I was using on it, and that's how we came up with those sounds of the clap. You can hear them on a number of records. And then I would change them periodically. I would use snares, and those are electronic drums. And I knew how to program my snares to give them the attack of my clap. And I used syndromes too. And they have a different sound, sound to them. And do them too. So, and then it's claps like on more bounce to the ounce where the, I may add a tamarine on top to give the clap a, a whole different sound for that song. Then there's wide receiver for Michael Henderson. And those claps are different, and sling shots, all of them, and now Hudson in one way, cutie pie, and all those things, you know. You did the triangle on cutie pie. Right? Well, it's flexitone. It's flexitone. a flexitone. Yeah, but I, uh, it's so many songs, man. It's, I, know we I did Was Not Was. I did the rap on there, and percussion on Woodworth Squeaks. I uh, did the rap in the top, oh, and, okay. you know, it's. It's just a long career of a lot of music. So much history. Yeah, yeah. Every time I think about it, I think, oh, I did that record too. And I, there's not a time that I'm not in a vehicle and turn on the radio, and there's within an hour I'm gonna hear a song that I had something to do with, you know. And 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 it would be different music. It could be gospel. I did Clark Sisters. You brought the sunshine. Or I might hear enchantment. It's you that I need. The bongos that's on the top of the song, you know. Wow. And uh, and throughout the whole song, I did you know, two or three tracks on that song. Congas, bongos, different bongos. I got three sets of bongos, so I use different sound, tone quality for certain things I want to achieve. But you know, it's same bongos on. It's you that I need for L. J. Reynolds. I did on. Uh, enchantment is you, you know, is you that I need, you know, and so forever, uh, been evolving, you know, forever. I mean, the whistle and all the multi percussion that I do on Parliament and, and Funkadelic and California Love, and you know, you can hear the consistency of the player, you know, from. Smiling faces, you know, the maracas and and stuff in the congas that I've, the same congas I'm using on this video shoot, I've owned those since 1971. I have three sets. And they're sitting over there, packed up, ready to roll. <laughs> but, you know, those are the same congas that's on uh, Enchantment and Dramatic and uh, Snoop, uh, Doggy Dog World. I was even in that video with those kinds of, uh, in Doggy Dog World as well. Um, you know, so it's, you know, I can go on and on and on with music. I mean, this, this, this is such a treat, especially for you hip-hop artists. If you don't know your history, you're not deep enough in the crates. Read the back of the records, go through your crates, you're going to see this man's name a million times, Carlos Wood Small. Uh, Hip-hop music is based off the drum and off of percussion, so we oh, cannot, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. ignore the contribution yeah. of a legend yeah. such as yourself, and I'm just uh, honored and um, um, at a loss for words to finally meet you after hearing so much about you from my main man, DJ Los from Coast to Coast, my big oc. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a pleasure to hear you tell it yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, I get, I get to do a lot of interviews well, all the time, uh, and like I said, right now I currently tour with the legendary Four Tops, you know, around the world, uh, and even doing that era of music is is a joy, you know, because it's like we sell out 
around the world, uh, we tour all year round. We do the most prestigious uh, private parties, concerts. Uh, we do concerts for President Obama. We do uh, private parties for the Miami Heat. Uh, we do big shows, private parties for Kamanas, the Heart Society, you know, for General Motors, you know, we, we do so much music, um, and uh, it's like constant, we do tours, we do cruises, we, we do so much, you know, and my, my, my main thing is, I like giving back to the people. I'll do the local bars like the, the locker room lounge on Livinois between six and seven mile road where the people can be right up close, as close as this video to see how I do all these things, man. And, and that part is, is good for me, you know. Yeah. Well, Brother Butch, I just want to thank you for sitting down here and for, you know, telling telling your story oh, one, yeah. one more time. Yeah, and nice to meet you, Jack. The pleasure is, sure. is mine to finally meet you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. God bless you, and uh, may he continue to allow you to use your gift yeah. uh, to help make music a little more rhythmic and funky. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm into that, you know. I mean... I do the, I read the music, I read charts, you know, I work with Quincy Jones, and I work with Michael Jackson, uh, I worked with, you know, I can, every time I think about it, it's somebody new, there's new groups like Partner in Time, uh, I did their album last year, you know, you can hear me all over that album, I did Arts, Beats, and Eats with them this year, and last year, I worked with Larry Lee back in the day band, which is the number one band in Michigan. Um, I do large venues with them. Uh, I did arts beats and meets with them. I worked with George Clinton. I think I'm the only musician that did the Fox this year, uh, two weekends in a row. I did it the 27th of April with George Clinton, and I did it the next weekend with Enchantment at the Fox. I did dramatics at the Opera House this year, you know, so when I'm in town, if I'm available to work with other acts and other groups, I do, but I do travel uh, almost on an exclusive basis with the four tops. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the words of my big art, DJ Lowe's, I want to say shalom to you, and, uh, you know, be, being fresh and being timeless, you know, that, that that's something I aspire towards, and you know, so I just want to be more like you when I grow up, Mr. Small. Oh, you're doing your thing. Everybody, if you didn't got it to make it to be 40 and know your craft, you're doing your thing. And that's okay. what I did. I, you know, I started in high school. I couldn't even graduate. I had two months to go and uh, myself and three other guys, we're all in the, in the music industry at the top of our game. Uh, and I'll mention their names, uh, Ricky Lawson, famous drummer, uh, Ricky Rouse, famous guitarist, Eddie Watkins, famous bassist, and myself, you know, Carl Butzmar, famous percussionist, and, you know, it's from, it's from high school, uh, Cooley High, and we all formed at Cooley playing in the talent shows, playing behind all the vocalists and all the people, all the bands, and everybody knew we were going to do music. Because we've been doing this from 16 years old as professionals and, and still doing it today. And all of us, you know, are in, in music in a major way. So. So. Well, well, thank you again. Once again, Carlos Bushmore, legendary master percussionist, yeah. Detroit Song. Oh, yeah. Peace. Shalom. Yeah.